Do you ever wish you could have a life do-over, similar to a makeover or a house renovation? A chance to try something again with a different result? Try Again with Monique is a place where I will give you my take and also hear from you regarding the questions and challenges we all face in life. You will either be inspired to try life again, over and over again, or make some really good lemonade from those sour lemons. Either way, I got you. If at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique. So today I am speaking with Dina Stevenson, actually Dr. Dina Stevenson, who is an educational consultant with extensive entrepreneurial experience and who currently runs her own company. As you can probably tell by what she does, she's a busy lady, and I'm so glad that she was able to make time in her schedule to be on the podcast. I'm really excited to hear what she has to share with us today because I know for a fact it is, it is going to help someone. Welcome, Dina, and thank you for agreeing to talk to me today. How are you? How wonderful, Monique. Thank you for asking me to well, be on your show. It's a pleasure. It's my pleasure. I, I know you're going to help someone today. My intention for the Try Again with Monique podcast is to really encourage people to, you know, think outside the box about their lives and to maybe, you know, consider doing something differently or trying something new, especially if they didn't like how things turned out, you know, the first time around. So um, today's topic is, pers- as you know, is personal success. And what I want to discuss with you is how you define it for yourself and how you have navigated various transitions in your own life. And the first thing I want you to share with us is, you know, a moment in your life or your career in which you reinvented yourself or you tried something new or something different. Talk to us a little bit about that transition and how it came about. I'm sure. I guess I have to start with my doctorate. So my doctorate is in medicine. And I practiced for a few years and I realized that it wasn't fulfilling. It wasn't something that was providing me the joy that I thought it was going to provide. And so I walked away from that. And so I have a history of if it doesn't feel right, if it doesn't feel like it's going to provide me with the life um, that I, you know, want to live, then I have to make it a decision to leave. And so that's to me, that that's always been my mindset. I think, I don't know if that's, you know, a genetic thing or yeah. it is, it has just been something. And so I walked away from that and went into education Okay. Um, and realized that I truly loved teaching. I loved um, supporting students. I love supporting my, my fellow colleagues and probably, um, maybe about three years into um, being a teacher, I became a, a principal and realized that I love that as well. Like had, you know, pursuits to become the commissioner of education for the state of New York, like, you know, high yeah. expectations for myself. And probably after um, my fourth building, cause we, we move, you know, principals get moved around after my fourth building, I realized that, that support that my teachers were getting from me and people from the district level, the support that students were getting from teachers and from myself, I wasn't getting. Like I wasn't, no one was feeding me. And so I decided to leave the principalship and pursue a a career or a a business in um, education consulting. And so now what I do is I support principals. I give them that support that I was craving um, so that they can be successful. And, you know, so I, I, I'm telling that story because I think it's important for people to realize, first of all, that this life that we live, it's not a dress rehearsal. And yes, so, yes. so often we stay in careers, we just stay in things that are not fulfilling us. And so, um, and we're, we become miserable. And so to me, I define, you asked earlier, like, how do I define success? Success to me is living the life that I believe God has purposed you to live. And if at any time it feels like it's just not, it it just doesn't feel of God, then it is time for you to kind of look at it and see what can I do differently to continue to support my family, to continue to pursue that life that I believe God has, um, you know, purposed us to live 
you got to do it. You have to, and it's scary. Like I'm not, you know, when I left medicine, it was scary. People thought that I was crazy. (laughs) When I left left the principalship, people thought I was crazy. Um, And, and I was scared. And there were times, Monique, that I would pass myself in the mirror and look at myself and say, girl, you're crazy. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 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 It, it, It wasn't without reservation. Sure. But I always knew I'm, I'm a, I'm a firm believer. in if it doesn't work, okay, you can always go back. Like if, if leaving medicine didn't work for me, I could always go back to medicine. If leaving the principal didn't work for me, I could always go back to the principalship. And so right, right. it wasn't like a do or die situation. And I think that's what people feel. They don't want to leave a particular situation because they're like, well, what if it doesn't work? Sure. But what if, but what if it does? Fear of failure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Par- can paralyze people. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, so interesting. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just listening to you, and it's, it's such an interesting uh, leap from the field of medicine, then to education, uh, being a teacher, then being, you know, in a more administrative capacity, a principal, and now you're actually helping principals and school districts. Um, you know, you were running a school and now you're helping people who run schools. I think that's such an interesting path that, that you've taken and that you've really settled in education. My next question was going to be, what did you learn from that experience? But you've already shared some really good stuff. And I just started jotting down some things, you know, um, you know, you learned that sometimes you have to do it afraid. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know that you cannot worry about others' opinions uh, regarding your choices. Um, that you have to, you know, sort of work with that fear of failure. You know, let that go um, because it's, it's, you know, if it doesn't work, you know, you can make a different choice. <laughs> like you said, you can go back. You can try something different. Try something new. I think those are great takeaways for our listeners uh, if they want to try something like that, something that's a little bit, you know, scary uh, or, or new or different. And they, you know, going into unknown territory. Uh, in some cases, to really just not be afraid. I actually did a podcast not too long ago on doing it afraid because I think that's just a life lesson really for all of us. Um, is there anything else that you learned from that experience of, of transitioning? Well, you know, I don't. I also think that nothing happens by accident. So even the training that I received as a physician, it helped me as a teacher. It helped me. It helped me diagnose what was, you know, what a student, you know, didn't understand about a particular lesson. When I was a principal, it helped me diagnose how to turn my school around. I mean, I use the same strategy. Um, it is Interesting. no different. And, and so like in medicine, we were taught um, this acronym. It's N-L-D-O-C-A-T. And so the N stands for like, what is the nature of your visit today? And so I take that when I'm working with school leaders, what is the nature of my visit today? Like, what is it that you want to um, accomplish by the end of this three hour session that I have with you on your campus? So that's the N. Okay. The L is the location and, and it, it was location for medicine. But now I'm like, okay, let's, because I only have three hours with you, we're not going to save the world in three hours. And so right, right. what is it? Is it your fifth grade student? data that we want to look at it is it you know is it the reading data that we want to look at so we're going to narrow down what is is specifically that we're going to um focus on okay and so the the d is duration so usually in medicine it's like well how long was this how, how long was this this issue bothering you but for us it's like how long have you been working on the student data to to, to improve it and so I use that. And so the um, it's N L D O O is for onset. When did you start? When did you start noticing that there was something just not right with the student data? The C is the course. What have you done that has improved upon it? What strategies? What instructional strategies have you taught teachers to use to maybe support students so that they can improve upon whatever the skill set is that that they're lacking? The A is aggravating effects. What um, effects? What is what is it that really um, you know? Is there a particular teacher that maybe needs more help? Maybe. Is it the time of the day? Maybe your schedule needs to be shifted. Okay. Maybe your fifth graders are taking math after lunch and, and you know, they're tired. And sure, so sure. Maybe you need to alter your schedule. And then T um, is treatment. And and, T, and for us, for me and um, education now, it really is about how are you progress monitoring? 
this. If if I um, share strategies with you today, how often are you going to be going into the teacher's classroom to support this? What kind of feedback are you going to be giving? And what can okay. the district do to help? And so I use the same strategy. That is um, amazing. <laughs> Really amazing that what you did in the field of medicine really sounds like it laid the foundation for what you're now doing. Um, nothing, no experience was wasted in your life. At all. Not at all. Absolutely not. It, 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 and it can't be. I mean, if you think about it, when you look at the life lived, everything that every experience that you have, you should have learned a lesson from it. Good, I bad, agree. or ugly. I agree. You need to you need to stop doing it. Right. I mean, you know, when right. we're little, and you know, and and we put our hand over the fire. We know when the first time we do it, we think oh, it's okay. The right. second, you know, but when we do it and we realize that it's hot, we Don't, remember. We won't that. do that again. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Very exactly. true. Very true. That that is that is that's fascinating. Um, you've already t uh, t I've mentioned a couple of things that you really have shared with our listeners that they can as takeaways. Are there any other takeaways that you want our listeners to know? You've shared quite a bit. Um, you know, you <laughs> talked about that fear of failure. You talked about doing it afraid. Uh, you can't be worried about others' opinions uh, to move forward. And you know, um, you, you, if it does something doesn't work, it's not a deal breaker. You know, you can go back. You can try something new. You can make a different choice. Is there anything else you would you would want them to know? And and also you just talked about how no experience is wasted. Um, don't look at any of your experiences. I, I'm taking from that as, you know, th there's something you can get from everything that you, you've done in your life. There's some lesson you mentioned that you can learn. Good, bad, or right. ugly, like you said. Good, bad, or ugly, <laughs> right. I think the other um, takeaway um, is if you see someone else doing something that you want to do, mm -hmm. you know, like um, I wanted to get into education consulting. It was a little, you know, there were some reservations because I'm like, well, who do I, who, who would I talk to? Who mm -hmm. would give me a contract? I don't have experience like in this, you know, entrepreneurial spectrum, spectrum. But what I realized is that there were so many other people doing this. Okay. And some, and, and, and nothing against people who, who attempt to do things and maybe they're not as successful. But those that were successful to me, they weren't doing it as well as I knew I could do it. Okay. And so, yeah. When you when you see someone, you know, taking a leap of faith and doing something that you want to do, that to me should give you like the motivation to go, well, if he can do it or if she can do it, then I can do it as well. And so that's sure. always that's always been another piece of inspiration that I'm not going to copy what you're doing, but I'm going to study you. I'm going to research you. I'm going to see what it is that you do and do it a hundred times better. And so that's always been my mindset. I'm super competitive, but I'm competitive in a sense that I think I'm competitive. I'm a, I know, I don't think. I'm competitive against people then they don't even know that they're part of my competition. Okay. But okay. I use them. I mean, the internet um, being as vast as it is, allows you the opportunity to do the research and to identify people who are doing something that you want to do and they're doing it and it appears to be successful, Sure. then you can, you can do it as well and you tweak it to make it work for you. And so that fear part to me, um, it's not as significant okay. Uh, okay. because I know that, and, and, and I want your listeners to hear this, that I think the fear should be not doing it. Like that's what you should be afraid of. Got it. Got not it. doing it because you know, I always, I tell my children this all the time. If you plan on being here for the next five years, mm -hmm. then you might as well work on doing whatever it's going to take to get you there for the next five years. So that when five years from now comes, you're not regretting that you didn't start that thing five years ago. Right. Right. And, and so if you plan on being around anyway, you might as well know, you know, I think, because I think the problem is another problem, Monique, is that people don't want to start at the bottom. <laughs> they, sure. They, and work their way up and work right. their way up. And yeah. So, and, and, you know, and so a positive to social media and to, you know, having access to people via the internet is that you get access to them. But a negative is, is that you see them, in a, in a place that looks glamorous and sure. it looks like, you know, they were, they were always successful. You don't really get to see when the they were on the struggle bus. or the behind yeah, the, the scenes or the behind right. the scenes. Sure. Right. And so when people want to start, and I always tell my coaching clients this, that when you want to start 
um, as an education consultant, you can't, you can't start where I am. You right. can't, you right. can't expect to get the same types of contracts that I get now because I didn't get these contracts in the beginning. Sure. So, That's a good point. Um, but people, people don't want to wait. You know, we unfortunately live in they a They don't society. like the process. The process. They don't. They yeah. don't, they don't, yeah. they don't want to go through the process. They don't want to fail. And, and, and I failed a lot. And I think that's what has contributed to my success because I've learned, sure. you know, I've learned from the failures. That, oh, okay. I can't do that again. Oh, okay. I can't ask that question or I can't, you know, I can't, you know, proceed this way with this particular, right. whatever. Right. Um, that didn't work. So we won't again, try that again. Exactly. And yeah. so I think that's another thing that I think people don't want to start at, at the bottom. They want to start where they see their favorite person, you know, that they're, that they're, you know, looking up to and they don't realize it. Like they weren't born that way. Like right. they, they went right. through some struggles as well. So sure. everything has a process. Everything yeah. has a process. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I was thinking of a quote as you were talking because fear can be so paralyzing as you were alluding to, it can really keep people from moving at all. Um, mm-hmm. and, and like you said, you should be, have a fear of not doing it. I, I, there was a quote I read once that said at the end of your life, you know, your regrets are going to be more about what you didn't do um, over what you did do. You know, people mm-hmm. are so, I think, sometimes concerned with, like you said, fear of failure. What if I make a mistake? What if I fall on my face? That, And as you said, that can be a stepping stone to success. Sometimes that is part of success, how you handle uh, failure. You know, what you learn from failure really mm-hmm. ends up catapulting you to, to the point of being successful in your life. But yeah, you regret at the end of your life what you didn't do more than you'll ever regret what you tried. Because at least you know with the things you did, you tried it. Um, and as you have said, you can learn from it. Um, that that Those are some great takeaways for, for our, our audience. Thank you so much. Dina, you, you Earlier, uh, you, you kind of quickly defined, uh, gave a definition of success, but I want you to just repeat it again for those that might have missed it um, when you talked about it earlier. How do you define success? You know, it, it, it changes for me. <laughs> it really does. I think when I was younger, I, I looked at success um, with titles. Okay. And, you know... Um, I'm a goal setter. Like I live my life by setting goals and putting action in place. I think my whole life is like a strategic plan. <laughs> but anyway, um, whatever uh, works, whatever <laughs> works, it's clearly worked for you. <laughs> <laughs> but now it really is living the life that I believe God has purposed me to live. Like, you know, I, I joke with my family and say that I'm God's favorite person. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, and I think, I think we're all of his favorite people, but I do believe that there is assignment. There is an assignment for me. And I know when I am off course mm-hmm. and need to shift that I'm not pleasing him. And so success to me is living that life on purpose um, it's really not about money. It's really not about titles anymore. It's really, it's more about helping. And so I've, I, there's a, there's another quote, you were talking about some quotes, but there's a quote and I can't remember who it's by, but he says, if you help enough people get what they want, you will ultimately get what you want. And I so that, that. Is, that is, that is success to me. Just helping, you know, people um, without, you know, thinking that I'm going to get something back from it. And when, when I just, when I decided ultimately to live that way, Monique, Mm -hmm. like think like doors just open. It is just, it's almost like I laugh now. Like when I get an email from a school district, from a random school district and they're like, well, we heard about your, your services. Can you help us? You know? And I'm just like, like, from who? Like who did who did you hear? That's awesome. You know? Um, and it and, and so I don't have to seek contracts anymore. They seek me. But that hasn't always been the case. But I truly believe believe it's because of the way that I now live. It is like Sure, sure. You know, I if if I help enough people get what they want. I will ultimately get what I want. And so to me, that's success. I absolutely love 
that description and it's it's really my definition uh, you and I have the exact same definition I really believe that is and I believe that your success is because you're walking in purpose um, and so I, I just I think that you know God made us with intention for a purpose as you said mm-hmm. the, your purpose is your assignment you know I call it the human assignment it's your human job you know we have those day jobs where we you know nine to five mm-hmm. and you get paid and you know you show up on time and all of that your human job is your purpose that's your mm-hmm. assignment, you know, what, what, what you were put here to do. I always say God made us with intention for a purpose. Nobody's a mistake. If you're mm-hmm. here on planet Earth, it's because God wanted you here. But then he gave you an assignment. He didn't just, you know, put you here. He gave you an assignment and that that is your purpose. And and you ju- that's your job for the rest mm-hmm. of your life. You know, your mm-hmm. first job is to find out what it is, <laughs> you know, and then, the you know, the, the next part of that job is to as you said, walk it out, fulfill it. Um, Mm -hmm. I I think it's it's so interesting because you were talking earlier about how, you know, when you didn't know what to do in the beginning with your educational consulting company, you were looking at other people, but then you you understood that I'm not to emulate them exactly. I'm to glean from them, Mm -hmm. but I've got to do it my way. I've got to do it as as Dr. Dina Stevenson, Mm -hmm. you know, and my own, my, my own unique mark in this particular field. And, and that's what you have done, I believe, because you understood purpose and that you can only do it the way you can do it. There's only one Dr. Dina Stevenson. There's only mm-hmm. one, you know, Monique Davis, and we can only do it the way God has given us to do it. And it will be unique, even though it might be the same thing that somebody else is doing. We're going to add a little uniqueness to how we how we approach it and how we do it. And you've done that very successfully. I love that. Love that. Love that. Do you consider yourself successful? Why or why not? I... <laughs> I don't because I don't feel like I've helped enough people. <laughs> okay. So okay. I'm, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm constantly um, telling my husband, um, there are not enough days in the week. And, but you know, there are not enough days in the week. There are not enough hours in the day. We all, you know, I think many, many of us feel that sure, way. Sure. Sure. Um, but so that's, so that's the answer. That's the part A to the answer. Okay. The part B is, you know, when, when I look back over, you know, the, the careers that I've had, the businesses that I've had, um, if I were to measure my current success from them, and I'm not even talking about like monetarily, I'm just talking about the people that I've been able to touch, even mm-hmm. though they're, it's not the number that I want to touch. I have to, I have to say, yes, I am okay. successful okay. Be- only because, um, you know, my, my expectations of myself are probably higher than, than, than most. You have an inner um, drive. I, I do. Yes. And so when I, you know, at the end of a school year and I'm not, and, and the school is not where I would hope it would be, or a school leader isn't performing at the capacity that I, that I see in them, that mm-hmm. pulls some of that energy from me. You know, that pull, I'm like, ah, oh, I didn't do my job as effectively as I should have because they're the same person, like they haven't changed. And so my, my husband's always telling me, you can't internalize what other people, you know, will and won't do. So, sure. um, so it's the lo- the long answer is yes. Okay. But. But, I understand. Dot, dot, dot. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now, now um, we're going to wrap it up um, a little bit. I just have a few, a couple more things. Um, first, I want to ask if you want to, um, you know, I want to give you an opportunity really to, you know, let people know how they can, you know, connect with you, get in touch with you. If they're really interested in knowing more about your business, if they want to, you know, talk to you about, you know, contracting you, <laughs> how can they get in touch with you? The easiest would be my website. Okay. Um, it's doc, D-O-C, Dina Enterprises.com. So D-O-C, D-E-A-N-A, Enterprises, E-N-T-E-R-P-R-I-S-E-S.com. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, my last question, and then then I'll, I'll let you go, is uh, a light one. <laughs> and that <laughs> is, um, what is something, Dina, that you like or that you dislike that most people wouldn't know about you that you're willing to share publicly, of course? <laughs> oh, boy. Hmm. Oh, my goodness. You know what? Um, I... That's hard, Mom. I know, I know. You have to really think about that that question. What is something that most people wouldn't know that I like or dislike? Um, You know what? Most people probably wouldn't know that I absolutely love, not like, 
Okay. Absolutely love the Kardashian. <laughs> really? Okay. Yes. Well, there it is. I, I, I'll, I'm willing to bet that most people wouldn't know that. That no. most people wouldn't no. know that. <laughs> I'm not even going to ask you why, but we'll just keep it at the Kardashians. That's yeah. good. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> Dina, I, I want. I, I've watched you um, the last few years. I want to say before we we go, I've watched your evolution. I've watched your growth from a distance. You know, mostly on social media. But but I I want to say I do know you personally. We do have personal history, and I want to clarify mm-hmm. we have good personal history. <laughs> Right. Uh, we have good personal history, uh, but I've watched the way you've, you know, persisted and you've transformed yourself both really personally and professionally. Your journey has, I just want you to know that your journey has really inspired me. And I know for a fact it has inspired those that are listening, uh, many of whom are meeting you and hearing from you for the first time. But I know you've inspired them with what you have shared today. I, I just want to thank you again, Dr. Stevenson, for your time and for your willingness to share so many great takeaways that we can glean from and that we can apply to our lives as we set out to achieve our own personal success. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Try Again with Monique. If you enjoyed today's episode, please take a moment to leave a review wherever you are listening. Please also remember to hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when new episodes are available. New episodes will be posted weekly. Please also like and follow us on Facebook. Try Again with Monique is a production of GM Associates, released under Creative Common Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. Remember, if at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique.